I visited White Sands National Park in October of 2021. The sand is from an ancient, shallow, salty tropical sea that left behind gypsum layers that were uplifted fairly recently, at least in geological time. These gypsum dunes are less than 10,000 years old. The sand doesn't blow away because there is a shallow water table that is the glue that holds the dunes together. Most of the plants within the dunes at White Sands thrive in gypsum soils. Because the 45-foot high dunes can travel up to 38 feet per year, the plants have had to adapt to survive. They have to either grow tall, grow fast, or hold on. Not only have the plants adapted, so have the animals. Many animal species living in the white gypsum are a lighter color than their relatives just a few miles away. Some animals have an easier time surviving because they are nocturnal. People have been coming to this area for a variety of reasons for over 10,000 years, as John Muir stated, only went out for a walk and finally concluded to stay out till sundown, for going out, I found, was really going in. Even NASA has come to the area, as White Sands and Mars have a lot in common. Their scientists believe the gypsum dunes were formed in a similar way. Believe it or not, this area shifted from Ice Age mammoths and giant sloths to desert mammals like kip foxes and Apache pocket mice in less than 10,000 years. During my visit to the White Sands National Park, I hiked the short, one-mile dune life nature trail. It is on the edge of the dunes, is easily reached from the parking lot, and is pet friendly. You have to love the warning sign that says not to touch any strange object, as sometimes military planes drop dangerous objects on the dunes. The transition between the desert and dune fields is where life is most abundant. If you walk this trail after sundown, you might see the creatures shown on the last sign. During the day, you should look for tracks of kit foxes, badgers, birds, rodents, and reptiles that call this edge their home. Our tour guide today is Katie the Kip Fox, and she welcomes us to her home. No matter what we eat, we depend on each other to live in this desert. Plants provide seeds and nectar to the herbivores. Herbivores are meat for the carnivores, and carnivores die and become nutrients for the plants. The grasshopper mice are almost 100% meat eaters. That is, if you think of deadly centipedes and scorpions as meat. They hunt at night, and after a kill, they get up on a rock and let out a lion-like roar. Yucca moths and soap tree yuccas could not live without each other. The moths carry pollen from flower to flower. No moths, no new seeds. One place where a yucca moth egg is safe until it hatches is inside a yucca pod. When you are the size of a five-pound chihuahua like me, you keep a sharp eye peeled for a coyote the size of a beagle. Coyotes don't care that we both belong to the Canis family. A hungry coyote will catch and eat kip foxes like me. Coyotes do a lot of patrolling every night. They can roam as far as eight miles from their den, which is like hiking this trail eight times. The sand is so fine, I mean, you can't hardly even peel it. There's no coarse grains at all. It's finer than sugar. Most bats eat while they fly. But my palet bat friends are not most bats. They like to crunch down on big bugs that almost never fly. Crickets, cicada, stink bugs, and scorpions. 
Since their food is rarely up in the air, it is not strange to see palet bats having their dinner on the ground. Darkland beetles, also known as stink bugs, are chock full of protein and fat, but there is that awful smell. Roadrunners, my very fast friends, are mostly seen in motion. For the record, they can fly, but they prefer a super fast trot. This makes it easier for them to grab a tasty lizard or snake or a snack on the run. At sundown, they are ready for bed. They like sleeping in the same roost every night. You can find roadrunners in the same tree night after night catching some Z's. What do you like to drink? I like water. My neighbors, the Apache pocket mice, don't drink, ever. They never have to take a drink because they get all the water they need from their food. These mice carry seeds they harvest in large cheek pouches. Then they stash them in cool underground pantries where the seeds absorb moisture. This helps the mice to get more water. These trail markers are all over the place. I guess they don't want us wandering off into the desert and getting lost. That wouldn't look good on the news, would it? So it's a pretty hard bag trail, even though the sand is soft, but um, most of it's just hard right underneath it. <clears throat> so that's a pretty easy walk. I've seen some lizards. They say most of the species in this area adapt and become light colored so they don't stand out. Whereas you know, just a few miles away, you know, they're, they're the same lizard would be brown color. So pretty interesting given they said the dunes are around 7,000 years old, plus or minus a few thousand. Um, so in a very relatively short period of time, the animals have adapted to their environment. So interesting talk about the plants how they survive because the sand piles up and so as the sand piles up some of the plants like the yucca just grow taller and then when the sand blows away it's so tall it can't support itself so the yucca collapses kind of interesting well next information sign coming up definitely gotta check that out always thought owls were an interesting bird, but I had no idea they could hiss and make rattlesnake sounds to chase other animals away and scare them away. That's just crazy. Definitely crazy. Do you have a trick to get your favorite food? Burrowing owls line their dens with poop from other animals to attract their favorite food, beetles. When bugs show up, they grab them. These owls like to take over foxholes or tunnels of badgers or prairie dogs, places rattlesnakes also live. The owls stay out of sight and fake out enemies by hissing and making scary rattlesnake sounds. That tree is a good example of what I was talking about earlier. So obviously the sand was higher and the roots followed it. Now it's um, sands have blown away and, and these large branches or roots are left exposed. Interesting. You have friends who will eat anything? My Nighthawk friends are good at doing just that. At sunset, you may see them zooming overhead, mouths wide open, scooping up moths, beetles, grasshoppers, winged termites, and flying ants. In the fall, some of these birds will fly all the way to Brazil, which is like flying from Los Angeles to New York and back. Imagine all the weird bugs they could gobble along the way. You like to eat the same food night after night? Not me. I like to eat a lot of different things. The bobcats that also live here in the dunes like to eat jackrabbits. A lot. Biologists who study desert bobcats say that 45% of their diet comes from just one prey, jackrabbits. It takes a lot of four-pound rabbits to keep a 24-pound bobcat going strong. Some of my friends like to be left alone. The tarantula hawk lives alone and hunts alone. Her prey, the tarantula spider, is bigger, hairier, and more venomous. When this wasp finds a tarantula away from its lair, a death match begins. If she wins, she paralyzes the spider and lays one egg inside it. 
She drags it to her hideout and seals it underground. After hatching, the young wasp eats the spider from the inside out. Are you a picky eater? Our friends, the badgers, are not. They will eat almost anything. They will chow down on mice, prairie dogs, honeybees, frogs, fish, bugs, skunks, corn, and mushrooms, and snakes, even rattlesnakes. Wow. Badgers will teach their young how to hunt, which is important when they try to eat a dangerous meal. Look at me on top of my pedestal. I like it up there because I can see all around. Only after sundown do I come out and look for food. My large ears help me find lizards, insects, kangaroo rats, and small birds. I must be quick to catch my food. What is your favorite hiding spot? Cottontail rabbits have to hide throughout their lives to stay safe. As babies, they stay hidden in fur and grass-lined nests. Their moms stay away most of the time except to nurse them. No mom at home means predators have less chance to find them. Adults hide under bushes in the heat of the day. When danger appears, they freeze, then zigzag away. Thank you for joining me on today's hike. Hope you found it as interesting as I did. If you're interested, there are a few minutes of video from the Visitor Center up next.